All right. We got another package from across the water. This one took a little while to get here. Sometimes that happens. It is what it is. I ordered a dip glass pen. Why? Because I've seen everybody else on YouTube using them, making videos about them. And well, Joe doesn't have a dip glass pen video yet. We had to make one. So I ordered this kit for $4.88 on eBay. I'll make sure I leave links below. I know they didn't have many left. As I noticed here lately, some of the videos I've been making, the products I'm revealing, I bought the last one from the person. Maybe that's why I got such a great deal. You know, it is what it is. But I'll leave some sort of link below so you guys can see it if you want one yourself. I have seen these as much as, well, all 15 to $20. You know, only pay the five. I think that's all it's worth. But let's check it out. It might be worth a little bit more to you. First and foremost, you get the glass pen. They put a little covering over it, this little thing here, to protect your tip, which is awesome. We'll put that right there. Second, you get a nice little bottle of ink. I chose the blue pen with the blue ink. They had green pens with green ink, red pens with red ink, and so on. I chose the blue. That's what I wanted. We are gonna use their ink too. Why not? You know, we gotta really find out what kind of pen this is, right? So we'll go with that. And it's considered a three-piece set. Last but not least, included in your three-piece set, you get this little thing here. I had completely no idea what it was when I got it in. All I knew is it looked kind of funky. I slipped it over the pen a couple times trying to figure it out. I still couldn't figure it out. So I had to go back over to eBay here and say, what the heck did I buy? Apparently this right here is a tool that you use to put on the table. And when you want to lay your pen down, instead of laying it on the table with the ink, you can rest your pen right on that glass piece. That's what it looks like it's used for. Inside the pictures that I looked at for some of the pens, they all show the pen laying on this thing. So that's what we're going to use it for. And while I was looking at the descriptions of the pens, I also noticed they do give good deals. You buy one, get one at 8% off. You have to add two to the cart to get the deal. Right now, it looks like the pens are a little bit more than what I paid. So they do have some. Check them out. But let's get the let's get down to business now basically uh it's this is your basic basic dip pen it's got a pretty neat design we'll talk about that in one second let's go back up to the top of the pen as we always do we'll start at the top and work our way down as you can see the top of the pen stand it's clear it's light up here they move the center of the gravity with all the weight towards the bottom of the pen if you hold it like this, the center of gravity is going to be below your fingertips, which is perfect what you want. If you choose to hold the pen like this, which you're not supposed to hold it like this, I would say if anything like this, the center of gravity is going to be slightly above your fingers, which is a little bit different writing style. I like to have the center of gravity below my fingertips, but it is what it is. That's why we're going to test it out. We're going to see how it does. Now, that's the other thing as you move down, you can see there is, there's a design inside the glass there. How do you hold this pen? Well, technically, this here is all nib. You wouldn't hold that part. You wouldn't want to hold that little part because it's not too comfortable to hold on to. But if you held on between balls here, right, that's a nice little grip on the pen. I think that's a perfect grip. So there's one ball here, one ball there. You take that in, indentation, and you squeeze it with your two fingers and press it down with your thumb, and you now have a nice writing position. You're ready to dip, you're ready to go. I don't have any ink wells set up and ready to go. They do have a set where you can buy, and it comes with all the colors and pens, and it has a little ink well too. We're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna crack this puppy open. We're gonna dip into it and we're gonna see how it does. Before I get into that ink, I'm gonna wanna go ahead and I'm gonna wanna clean my ink pen tip. Any other 
fountain ink pen. I found out it's very important to take some alcohol, a nice wet alcohol pad, and clean off any of the impurities that might be on the pen before you dip into your ink. Those impurities can cause the ink not to flow, not to run right, all sorts of reasons why you should clean it so you make sure this gets very clean. If you guys ever have trouble starting off with your new pens, they never start off right, it's probably because you didn't clean your tip first. It's all right, if you didn't know, you didn't know. You learn something new all the time. I didn't always know that either, but I know now to always clean my pen tips. Even after you use them and they get dirty, take a nice wet alcohol pad, uh, paper towel soaked in alcohol, and go ahead and clean that up. So I have my alcohol here. We'll go ahead and clean that up. I suggest you be very, very gentle with this pen. Don't put any uh, pressure on it or whatever. It is glass. You know, just remember it is glass. It's not indestructible. You have to be careful. Once this is all cleaned up, we can get into that ink and we can get started. Now, the little ink bottle they give you, it looks like it's got a rubber top. It looks like it's one that can be flipped around and then you can use it maybe to pour. I don't know. We're not gonna go with all that hubbub, get into it. I hope they give you some good ink because this is going to uh, totally rely on whether this pen's really even all that good. Now we're going to juice it up. I'm going to get that whole thing buried in ink. It's supposed to hold the ink and then let it run down as you go. I guess it's going to be all depending on the ink too. But I made sure I went ahead and I juiced it all up. I think it's very important to know that this is non-carbon ink. So it's going to be very inky. All right, and this may not be the right paper either. I'm probably gonna get some sort of blotters, but we're gonna go ahead and try this out. I have nothing. Let's dip again. I have nothing. Let's dip again. I have nothing. Wow, what's going on here? Let's go on an angle. Ah, the angle makes the world of a difference. Once I hit that angle, it's all over. Now, I was just thinking, I remembered using calligraphy pens in art class and angle had everything to do. The, the angle of attack had everything to do with getting that pen to flow and these are no different. You have to get in on that certain angle. This way the ink can flow from that side chamber down onto the paper. If you're like this, you're gonna have no flowage. There's nothing allowing the paper to contact the ink and let that keep going. So angle's everything. Angle is absolutely everything. I'm pretty impressed with that there because this is not the right paper to be using. And that came out pretty damn good. I'll have to get out some calligraphy sheets. I don't think I have any more that would be suitable for this pen. I should have waited. But I really wanted to make this YouTube video for you guys and show you this glass pen. Pretty cool. All right, so I guess one of the questions we'll probably have here is with one dip, how much can we get? So let's try and see if we juice this up real, real good. How much can we get with one dip? All right, I'm gonna dip it all the way in. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna juice it up. I'm gonna come back over to my paper and I'm gonna start putting ink to paper and see how far my lines will go. Ooh, baby. 
flows. I tell you what, this design works. How, how it's like in this spiral shape at the end, which holds the ink. Cause it literally holds the ink and it's like a huge spiral. So there's a ton of ink for, for it to come down and flow down that pen. We're probably gonna get a nice little amount of uh, inkage here from each dip. Now this is a little old school. I'm not quite too sure exactly why you'd want to be using dip pens if there's any advantage to it. If you just noticed, I turned the pen and now I have this new fresh flow of ink once I turn the pen. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna do a little filling in because you know in your doodles you fill in every now and then. Right now I'm just trying to exhaust ink. I'm trying to see how much ink can I lay on this paper with one dip. I mean, I think that's a lot for one dip, right guys? It's all about the angle of attack. Keep spinning it to exhaust all the ink that you've held. And we're pretty empty. There's still a little bit of ink here on the end. Looks like we're getting this filled in now. Yes, we are. It's still flowing a little bit. Still flowing. Get it filled in nice and solid. Can we get one more line? Oh, look at that nice fresh line right there. Yes, we can get at least one more line. How many? It looks like I have one little strand of ink in one channel that's still going down the pen. You can literally see every channel I've exhausted the ink out of, except for this one little channel I've turned into. And as I write, that channel goes down. You can literally watch the ink go down in the channel. That is wild, guys, totally wild. I'm still writing on one dip. I'm sorry I didn't do anything fancy here. I'm just so excited. You know, I, I thought the pressure's on to actually draw something for real and review the pen and try to exhaust the ink. But guys, I'm still on the first dip. Let me remind you, I can watch this ink run down. I'm almost done. I can see I have just maybe a few more lines to go. I'm still just in that one channel. I gotta turn it perfectly. So I exhaust it, but I am still writing. I have little fine lines coming out. It is just about done. Oh, maybe right there, right there. And that's it, that's it. So that's one dip. This whole section, all this, that's one dip into the jar. You know, we're probably gonna have to come back and visit this. What I'm most likely gonna do is order another one of these glass pens. We'll try out maybe something a little different, maybe a little different shape. We'll uh, revisit the glass pen drawing I'll use some uh, paper that's meant for this ink, specifically for fountain pen ink. This way uh, it accepts the ink properly. We don't have any issues. And maybe we'll do a giveaway on this. But I'm gonna tell you, this right here is pretty impressive. This is, like I said, this is non-carbon ink. So it's real inky. Typically ink like this is kind of a little translucent um, I would say this is minorly translucent. It is, it's very inky. This pen might work a little bit different with uh, pigmented inks, acrylic inks. We'll go ahead, we'll give it a try. All the different inks we have, we'll give it a shot. Uh, see how it goes. But I wanna thank you guys for coming out, checking out the glass pen. I'm still so amazed that all this is just one dip.
I give this pen, uh, I would say for what it is, I'm gonna tell you, for what it is, this pen gets an A+. Is it my go-to? No, but I think it's pretty freaking cool. I'm gonna keep that on my desk and people are gonna love it. Joe Kaiser, have a good day, have a good night, have a good whatever it is, wherever you're at, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.